Good day and welcome to the channel. In this short video, we are going to provide a full review, unboxing, and setup of this, which is the Hisense 50 A6 KV. Really what we're trying to do is compare this uh, to other products from Hisense and some other companies as well. In particular though, we're really worried about the low end because in our case, we had an old 42 inch LG TV and what this particular unit was up against for us was the 43 A4 KV. So let's go through the naming convention uh, for Hisense. The first two numbers are the size. So we're, we're really thinking, in our case, mostly about comparing this to, an old, to a 43 inch versus this one that's a 50 inch. So that's a good thing to get the larger one as long as you've got space. The next thing is the generation. The A4 is an older series and we'll explain why that may or may not matter to you. And then KV is just regional settings. So uh, basically it's going to mean North America. So Canada and the United States. Now you can buy these uh, Hisense TVs pretty much everywhere from Amazon to Best Buy to uh, Costco, which is where this one came from. We've done several videos in the past on similar TVs. For instance, we uh, unboxed and did a full review on the 55A6 KV, which is the same TV, but just five inches larger. This time we're going to explain more about the details and the specifications to help you make decisions whether you're buying this TV or another TV. There are 12 primary differences between the A4 series and this newer A6 series. And we're going to go over those very quickly before we get to unboxing and setting this up. And you can decide whether those actually make a difference for you. The first thing is all of the A4s are just 1080p screens. And what that means is about 2000 dots across the top of the screen, as opposed to a 4K screen that has 4,000 dots across the top of the screen, call them pixels. So you think, does it really make a difference? Well, it's four times the resolution, which means it's four times as clear. If you don't look at these side by side, you can't tell the difference. If you see them side by side, you can totally see the difference. Well, the 4K is now the standard. The next thing is that the A6 series has uh, a brightness of 350 nits. So nits is just a, a, an illumination scale. And the old A4 series, like the 43A4 that we were mentioning a moment ago, only has 250 nits. Is 40% improvement in brightness actually a visible difference? And the answer is yes, it is. Is it critical when a bright room? It might be. Now this one's probably going to end up in a bedroom for one of our executives. So it probably doesn't make any difference. But the cost difference, well, we'll get to the cost difference just at the end of this. The next thing is the audio output. The A6 series, all of them have two 10 watt speakers. Whereas the old A4 series, only have eight watt speakers. Is eight watts versus 10 watts a big difference? Well, I hate sound bars. So yeah, it actually might make a difference. The next thing is what's called a color gamut. The Hisense A6 series has a PFS coating. If you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. It's just a phosphorus coating that makes the screen notably brighter. So things will be sharper. And the A4 series doesn't. Is that a crisis? Probably not for most people. This is a commodity TV but it's a nice thing to have, and I would pay an extra few dollars for it. The next thing are the smart features you can get on here. Uh, the applications, the, the technology behind it is actually better in the A6. I mean, not much of a surprise, it's newer. But here's one you really might care about. See, this says that it supports Alexa and Google Home. Well, that's the A6 series and newer. The A4 series only supports Alexa. Most people probably don't care about either of those, but I can tell you I really care about Google Home. I wanted to work with Google Home. The next thing is the CPU, and you said, oh, we're really getting techy. No, I'll be very brief. The A6 series has eight CPU cores. The A4 series only has four CPU cores. And you think, who cares? It just means it's gonna be a lot faster and smoother with the eight cores. Not to mention the cores are newer uh, generations, so they're better. The second last thing that you might care about is connectivity. The A6 has uh, an additional HDMI port and a couple of USB ports. So most people won't care about those, they just need the one of each, but uh, one HDMI and one USB, but you might, you might care. And the last thing we're gonna talk about before we unbox this is the color support. And you think color, boy, it's getting really weedy again, bud. Okay, so we'll make this really simple. Look, the A4 series uh, has a HDR10, which is just standard high dynamic range. And high dynamic range means that it can brighten up spots on the screen or darken spots on the screen rather than darkening or brightening the whole screen for an image. 
and that's great. Both the A4 and the A6 series, like this 50A6KV, have HDR10, and that's great. Most things have HDR10, most, not all, but most. However, this Hisense, being the A6 series, also has Dolby Vision. Dolby Vision is a step above high dynamic range, and what it allows filmmakers to do, or well, it could be anybody, but it's usually filmmakers, is actually specify frame by frame of the video you're watching where the brightness should be tuned up and where it should be tuned down. If you have a screen like this that does support Dolby Vision, it will interpret the data as it comes through. It will brighten up various spots on the screen as the producer wants, and it can make a very big difference in detail. So will you actually care about it? I don't know, but I can tell you when you see a Dolby Vision product next to a standard HDR product, it's noticeable. Because we're done with the notes, but there are a couple more things that we want to go over before we get to unboxing. The first is DTS-X. So DTS-X, you think, does this really make a difference? Yeah, it kind of does. Even with the two speakers that are in here, it will project the sound as if it's more quadraphonic. Uh, you know, if you're older, you'll know what that means. So as if you're running like a, a 5.1 system. So it will feel like some of the explosions or, or noises are coming from the left side behind you, not just from the front. And obviously the speakers here are just on the front. So how does it do that? Well, Dolby has figured that out. So that's kind of cool. It also supports Bluetooth and it has a voice control remote. And the biggest change with these newer generation of Hisense TVs is this. Vida, V-I-D-A-A, -A, right there. Now, what is Vida? Well, if you're familiar with the Roku TV, it's the same thing, but not Roku. It's Hisense's own operating system. And is it better than uh, Roku? Probably not. Is it 90% as good as Roku? I would say so. Unless you're interested in Roku-specific content, this is just fine. So this will get you, well, as it says here, Netflix, YouTube, Prime, Disney, and a pile of other apps that we will show you. So you don't need a cable box, you can just run this straight off the internet. And the last thing we're going to go over before we unbox it is why we sourced it at Costco. This was $357 Canadian, which is, for easy math, uh, right now it's about $250 US. And because uh, we purchased this on a Costco credit card, and we're Costco executive members, which is the, the top of the line membership, we're getting 3% back on this, which brings it down another $10. But the big reason to buy from Costco is the doubling of the warranty and the 90 day return. And this is just before Christmas. So it, for the next three months, if this goes down in price, Costco will give me uh, that difference. Why wait for Black Friday or any of those sales? Just buy it now. And if it goes down, just go to the counter and they'll give you your money back. I've done it many times with Costco, it's easy. But the biggest reason is the doubling of the warranty. Instead of a one-year warranty, you get a two-year warranty with Costco. All right, so that's the big differences in product, and hopefully some of that tech speak allows you to evaluate your TV or other TVs and figure out, you know, what these things mean. And in the box hanging is a bag with some screws, a manual power cord, and two batteries for the remote control. The next thing you need to do is pull off the coating that's on the screen. Um, and you've got to be careful because what a lot of people will do is they'll grab the screen. Never do that. You'll bruise the screen. Basically, you're going to damage some of the cells. So just be careful pulling this off. This is just shipping material, packing material. So just start at the back here, pull the tape off, there it is, just pull it around, pull it off evenly, and it will come off very easily. Have I mentioned this is light? Really light. All right, so let's look at the back and uh, the ports and all the good stuff. So you'll notice that I did screw the legs down. I did put the legs on this because I'm going to put it on a uh, surface, but uh, it does have a 200 by 400 VESA mount, so you can mount it on the wall without any trouble at all. And uh, let's look at the ports, and we'll go over them uh, one by one. So there's this reset button in here that you can just press and hold, and it will force the, because it's basically just a computer, it'll force a reset back to all of the factory settings. There are these three HDMI ports. Notice that HDMI 3, which is just the third port uh, for HDMI, 
It also has eARC on it. You might ask, what the heck is that? It's enhanced audio return channel. If you've ever tried to play with a sound bar before, especially on an older TV, you'll know that sometimes the audio is not in sync with the video that's on the screen. And ARC is the audio return channel that functions with HDMI version 1.4. eARC functions with HDMI 2 and above. Actually, I think it's 2.1, but whatever. The, the bottom line is it is the newer, better version. That's where you want to plug in uh, anything that is going to be connected to, say, a stereo or to a sound bar or something else. And you've got a USB port here. Uh, and then you have an RG6 connector. What the heck is that? Well, if you're old, you'll know that that's the old coax connect. In there is an actual old school TV tuner. And you might actually use that for things like connecting an old Nintendo or something to that effect. So it's actually uh, potentially usable. Then there's digital audio out if you have, again, another sort of sound bar or whatever else you want to connect to. And there's also here a LAN port. So in other words, uh, that is a network connection that you could plug straight into your internet if you don't want to use the Wi-Fi that's built into this. Then there are the old RCA jacks, which almost nobody's going to use, but no, they're there and a headphone jack if you want to use that. And then over here, you've got your power. So you can see this is an awful lot like a Roku or any other uh, smart TV, like Samsung smart TVs, sports Apple, uh, TV, Netflix, Prime, Disney, Crave. Oh my God, just on and on and on. It's got, you know, Tubby, Pluto, it's, it's got everything, right? And uh, you can add more uh, because you can go to their store and pull it down. Uh, I'm going to set up my Netflix just to show you that it's easy. Now I can also just press the Netflix button on here or Tubby, there's other ones and they would also work. Press exit and go play with the settings. But, uh, the settings are, see if there's anything particularly interesting here. I don't believe there is. I think it's all pretty much straightforward. Uh, picture size is an interesting one because if you're trying to connect it to a computer, you might have to play uh, with some of the settings. Sound, yep, that's all fine. Just use the normal TV speaker. CEC, that allows you to uh, run more than one device with a single uh, remote control and uh, that's very helpful but pretty much everything is CEC these days so you don't have to worry about it. Bluetooth, I'm not worried about that yet. Mobile apps and download. Yes, yeah, so we could install more if we want. I'm not going to. And let's go to support and over to system update, see if there's an update. We're going to turn auto update on and we're going to check for an update right now because this is really just a computer and there's pretty much always something new except today. Okay, so the last thing to show you here is the voice remote. So I'll press the voice button here and I'll say Netflix. Oops, so apparently I've got to go down and agree. There we go. And you can see here now we can use Google Smart Home, Alexa, or the uh, built-in one. Just to prove the point, we'll just use the built-in one. So I will uh, just bail out of here. And I will say Netflix. Pretty straightforward. Okay, so now it's time for our final review of the Hisense 50 A6KV, which is the same as the 55 A6KV and the 60 A6KV and the 65 and so on and so forth. Uh, because it's the A6 series. Now, what do we think of this? Well, for the, the money, I don't think you're going to find anything better. Uh, is it the most competitive product on the market? Well, you can probably argue that. There are lots of other companies out there. TCL comes to mind, makes a great product, uh, but uh, Hisense has been around a little longer, so I'm just a little more comfortable with it than some of the other uh, uh, brands. As an entry-level uh, screen, I just don't think you're gonna get much better than about $250 US, 350-ish Canadian, for a 4K screen with good quality sound, with Dolby Vision, Amazon Alexa, or Google Home integration, it you know a voice remote 
It's pretty awesome screen. So hey, if you found this video useful, please give us the big thumbs up. We'd really appreciate it. Subscribe is also always appreciated. If you have any questions or concerns, you can get a hold of us directly at www.urtech. That's www.urtech.ca. Or you can leave a question or comment below. And if we don't get back to you, rest assured somebody else will because on YouTube, everybody's got an opinion. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.